Hello everyone, today we're looking at Roberta, a robustly optimized BERT pre-training approach by Yin Han Liu et al. of mainly of Facebook research. So these, this paper is a pretty short, pretty simple paper. And the main premise is we've seen a number of improvements over uh, the initial BERT paper where different, um, different pre-training of of the transformer architecture or extension extensions of the architecture have been shown to have better performance than the original BERT model. And this paper basically says, if you get the design choices right, um, then BERT is able to basically be on par or exceed all of these other methods so far. So they're they're basically exploring design choices in the pre-training and training of of BERT. All right. So if you don't know what BERT is, by the way, I have made a video about BERT. I've also made a video about transformers. Um, if in very quick terms, BERT is a a language neural network um, architecture that takes as input uh, text such as this kind of um, thing you see here, text such as that, and it will kind of encode it out and it can do various things, for example, classify it into certain categories or um, kind of segment it, uh, extract answers from questions and so on. Um, the, the whole thing is is pre-trained with what's called a masked language model objective which where you don't need labels to train it so in a masked language model objective you basically mask out certain words during training and then you ask BERT to reconstruct these words from the surrounding information and that kind of has given some improvements in the original BERT paper but subsequent papers have claimed that you can improve even more by using different pre-training objectives and so on such as Excel uh, net but here um, these researchers basically explore uh, different things so they use a regular BERT architecture that's what they describe here so they use both the BERT base the 12 layer um, as well as the 24 layer BERT that has originally been originally been described. Um, they use masked language modeling as a pre-training objective, and they they explore the necessity of this next sentence prediction loss that has been part of BERT. So, uh, along with the masked sentence um, modeling, BERT has also had an objective where if you input a piece of Actually, you input two pieces of text, two sentences, such as this. These are two sentences. And BERT has to decide if the second sentence follows the first sentence in the corpus or in 50% of the cases, the second sentence is sampled from a different document. This kind of uh, is, so the original paper argued this is necessary to incorporate long distance relationships between text. Um, yeah, here the, the NSP objective was designed to improve performance on downstream tasks such as natural language inference. Um, and this paper kind of explores the necessity of that loss. In op terms of optimization, there is of course kind of a pre-training scheme and then a training scheme using Adam here with certain parameters. And also this paper explores the use of this of these parameters. Lastly, um, you have data, and of course these these models sometimes they're trained on different data, and that's why the comparing them makes it a bit harder to compare them because the pre-training is done on differently sized and differently differently structured data. Uh, this this paper also tries to investigate the influence of the training data, and especially what happens if we keep the training data constant. So. All right, so they implement BERT, they re-implement BERT, and then they fix some hyperparameters um, while they tune others. And first of all, the data set. So they, they use different data sets. The original BERT has been trained on this 
book corpus and Wikipedia, English Wikipedia dataset, which is 16 gigabytes large. Now, this paper here collects a what's this CC news dataset, which is a subset of the common crawl news dataset, which is all in. So the subset is the, is the English portion, and that's 76 gigabytes, which is um, on par with, for example, what GPT-2 used, I believe. Um, so this is a very large training set and kind of comparing this original data to the large corpus, kind of what influence that is, should, should make very clear what the influence of more training, of more pre-training data is. Now they also have a number of other uh, corpora, open web text, as well as up here I believe there's one more, stories, yes. So these are also uh, pretty sizable. Uh, but th these are like, yeah, these are like, have very specific uh, schemas to them. Um, then the evaluation here happens on several different kind of downstream tasks. So the idea is you first you pre-train this BERT model on with the masked language modeling and so on. And then uh, you have this glue task, which is actually a collection of nine tasks. And um, you have some some other tasks such as squad which is a question answering task and uh here race i don't even i don't know what that is in particular but just suffice to say these are kind of downstream nlp tasks the paper isn't about these downstream tasks but that is just a way to measure how well your pre-training worked if then you can fine tune on such a task and you get a good performance um, but what the tasks are in particular isn't too important. All right, so here we get into the meat of the paper. First, they they decide on what they call static versus dynamic masking. So in the original BERT paper, whenever they do masked language modeling, they take a piece of text and they basically replicate it a bunch of times because they want to iterate through data training data a bunch of times and then they in each uh, iteration they mask out different different tokens and um, they compare the they compare this to what's called dynamic masking so this is static masking uh, dynamic masking sorry dynamic masking would be where you um, in each basically on the fly generate your mask uh, you don't pre-compute it and save it. You on-the-fly generate it. This allows you to go uh, through kind of more or less of the data as you want. And when you encounter the same uh, sample twice, uh, even though you replicate it in the original BERT model, you could still encounter it twice if you train for longer than the number of replications. Then you basically see the exact same mask again and the the dynamic masking actually much more useful um, it's much more ad hoc each time you see a sample you generate the mask on the fly so they compare this here and they see that there is a marginal improvement so here higher is better marginal improvement in uh, two tasks and a less marginal uh, decrease in performance in one task so they decide uh, that this dynamic masking is of use second thing they investigate is the kind of input format and this next sentence prediction so as as i already said the original bird training objective always gets two sentences next to each other and has to decide if the second one follows from the first one actually it doesn't it observes two concatenated document segments which are either sampled contiguously from the same document or from distinct documents and this is half and half so in addition to the masked language modeling the model is trained to predict whether the observed document segments come from the same or distinct document uh, via an auxiliary next sentence prediction loss and um, they investigate different ways of including or excluding this 
loss. So first is what they they define if here if it's plus NSP, that means that this particular thing includes the next sentence or next segment prediction loss. So they have segment pair plus NSP, which means that each input has a pair of segments. Um, and these segments, now the difference, the distinction between a segment and a sentence is important, uh, where, uh, where the sentence is really a natural sentence, a segment can actually be multiple um, natural sentences, which is what the original BERT does. Uh, so as long as the combined length is less than 512 tokens. There can also be multiple um, sentences, but there's clearly two segments and you have to decide if they follow after each other or not. The second thing they try is the same thing. So the next segment prediction, but now it's just two sentences. It's just natural sentences. So it, it must be one sentence, a, 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 call, a period, sorry, and, and then the next sentence, a period, and you have to distinguish these two if they follow or not. Um, then they investigate full sentences, which is they leave away this next segment prediction loss, and they simply fill up the 512 tokens with text from the corpus. Um, so each input is packed with full sentences sampled contiguously from one or more documents. And the one or more document means if you so if you sample text right you sample here text you put all of this in the thing and you are at the end of a document you simply continue with the next one and go on until you have the 512 tokens um, so you basically fill 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 until you have 512 tokens and that's that's this um, this variant here and then in the last variant you do the same thing, this is called doc sentences, but you basically, you stop at the end. So even, so you put all of this in your state and if, if you hear, you stop. Um, and then you have to, you know, be content by simply padding the rest of the 512 tokens or something like this. Uh, so you don't have as much data, but the um, all the text that you have in one sample is actually contiguous text from the same document. So they, they pit these four things against each other. This is this table here. And um, as you can see here, the uh, best thing is this doc sentences um, thing. So on, on these thing, followed by the full sentences encoding, right? Uh, so, so there's some some ambiguities here, uh, but in general, you can kind of rank them as best, second best, and then here third best and fourth best. And uh, they conclude that this next segment or next sentence prediction loss here is more hurtful than helpful um, in the ways we see here. And they say even though this is most most effective, they it, in their case they rather go with this one because it's well I guess easier to implement. You get more data through the model in the same time, and uh, the performance decrease isn't that much. So, but it's pretty interesting to see that this um, next next segment next sentence prediction isn't super super uh, helpful in in actuality here so removing the NSP loss matches or slightly improves the downstream task performance uh, this is yeah in contrast to what the original BERT authors found but you have to keep in mind this is uh, also on, uh, on um, uh, has a bunch of other changes in then next thing they investigate batch size so batch size, sorry, batch size pretty seems to be pretty interesting for these large models in that they love large batch sizes. And they actually explore batch sizes 512 here as the smallest one, and they go up to 8,000. So 
this they do this actually in a in a data parallel way where they have many many machines with many GPUs and they parallelize the data and then they accumulate the gradient of all of these different samples and so they can go up to a batch size of what 8k and they find generally that the 2000 batch size here as you can see helps um, to improve the so perplexity lower is better and the other numbers higher is better helps uh, to to improve the performances if you control they control for data set size so the number of times you go through the data set is the same uh, but if you go with a larger batch size that seems to help up to a point um, here the 2000 seems to be the best they found so again a marginal improvement you can make by training with larger batch sizes and then this the last thing they've looked at is actually is text encoding so how do you encode text and the the, the pit here is basically between byte pair encoding or uh, word piece encoding to that to to decide how large your vocabulary is basically and as i understand it they didn't find a much of a difference between the different implementations of the text encoding so they decide they go with um they decide to go with one i don't even remember what, which one i think they go decide to go with byte pair encoding instead of word pieces um all right so they combine all of this into roberta which is the robustly optimized bert approach and they say roberta is trained with dynamic masking so what they showed first full sentence without the next segment prediction loss large mini batches a larger byte level byte pair encoding as well as of course their collection of training data um, and then here they also investigate how long to pre-train so if you look at the original BERT models or the XLNet models and then compare it to Roberta so Roberta this is the original data and they already beat BERT yet they do not they do not yet beat XL net with that so if they add data they get even better um, actually on par mostly with the with XL net if they pre-train longer they get even better and if they what they say pre-train even longer right so that here's the the number of steps if if your number of steps then match the number of steps that the um, Excel net does with the same additional data then um, or with their additional data then um, you outperform Excel net as well so this this kind of just an an overview of this then they evaluate on other downstream tasks and they basically show that in most of them they can reach state-of-the-art performance or exceed it um, with their approach and in conclusion they basically say well this only shows that kind of the the, the gains that these other models make and the reasons why they make gains may be questionable if you simply pre-train BERT um, in a better way you can reach the same performances so I think the, the end is not reached yet most of all they publish uh, their code their uh, data I believe I have not looked into this but definitely check out their repository where this is implemented seems pretty easy seems pretty straightforward and that was it for me. Bye-bye.